Dogs, cats, rabbits and other companion animals are often much beloved. One in every two households in the United Kingdom, for example, has a pet. Unfortunately, however, many of these animals are neglected. They may suffer from undernutrition, overnutrition, malnutrition. Obesity is becoming increasingly common in animals today. They are often neglected when their owners go to work and leave highly social animals such as dogs on their own all day. This can lead to problem behaviours such as inappropriate elimination, excessive barking and destructive behaviour. This can result in punishment when our owners come home from work and discover the consequences. And this sort of problem can lead to breakdown of the human-animal bond, leading to many of these animals being relinquished to shelters and subsequently euthanised. The opposite problem can result when owners are excessively attached to their animals and decline euthanasia for an old and ailing animal even when it is medically warranted. So-called exotic animals such as reptiles, birds, amphibians and fish are also becoming increasingly popular as companions. Exotic animals have highly specialised diets, husbandry and housing requirements and these can be more difficult to meet in domesticated settings. Unfortunately, because it can be so difficult to cater for their needs, many exotic animals die in the transportation chain to the retailer and also in the first year after purchase. Pet overpopulation is a major cause of companion animal death in many developed nations and a major contributor to this is so-called puppy mills. These are institutions in which animals such as dogs and cats are intensively farmed essentially being repeatedly bred, often in very poor conditions, with minimal opportunities to exercise and engage in normal social interactions. Because of widespread public concern about our puppy mills, bans are starting to occur in various regions of the world. California recently became the first US state to ban the retail sales of cats, dogs and rabbits. In the United Kingdom, the government has committed to banning the sale of cats and dogs in pet stores, online and by third-party dealers. Feral cats have average life expectancies of less than two years, compared to natural life expectancies of more like 15 to 20 years. They're at risk from disease, uh, injuries, including being hit by cars, injuries sustained by fighting and malnutrition. Unfortunately, they're highly effective as hunters of native birds and mammals, with native birds representing some 20 to 30 percent of the animals killed by feral cats in the US. Feral cats can be prolific breeders, capable of producing two to three litters per year, and under the right circumstances, the populations can build up to very high numbers very quickly. Solutions include non surgical contraception and surgical contraception, such as trap, neuter, and return programs. In these programs, cats are trapped and then they're spayed, castrated, so they can't go on to produce more litters, they're vaccinated, they may receive other basic preventative health care, they tend to be ear tipped so they can be identified at a distance, microchipped and then released again. This means that they will defend their territories against other cats that would otherwise come into the territory, but they won't reproduce themselves and so over time, this can result in a stable, healthy population that decreases through natural attrition. Population management requires public education about responsible pet care, the easy accessibility of sterilisation programs and their affordability for people. Many cats and dogs have been selectively bred over generations for aesthetically appealing conformational or anatomical characteristics and these have been perpetuated by breed standards. There are a very large number of these problems. Of the top 50 breeds registered with the UK Kennel Club, each one of these breeds had at least one hereditary conformational disorder. One of the most important concerns today is the breeding of dogs with increasingly flattened snouts, which impedes their ability to breathe. There are more than 100 breeds of cats, and more than 200 hereditary disorders have been identified associated with various feline breeds with several more being identified each year. Because of hybrid vigour, the healthiest animals genetically are always going to be the mixed breeds. Cosmetic surgeries are those that are conducted not for the medical benefit of the animal concern, but in order to meet uh, aesthetic standards or some other human desire. 
And these can include surgeries such as ear cropping, tail docking, dew claw removal, and onychectomy, which is feline dechloring. This involves the amputation of the uh, end parts of the cat's fingers and toes at the final joint. Cosmetic surgeries are unethical because they needlessly expose companion animals to avoidable risks of pain, suffering, blood loss, infections and loss of normal biological function. Dog sports include hunting and racing and working dogs include police dogs, search and rescue dogs and those that assist disabled people in various ways. These animals have been bred to have physical characteristics and a behavioural predisposition that benefits the desired activity. The welfare of working dogs can be compromised if their work is physically demanding, dangerous or stressful. Police dogs used in crowd control activities are at risk from things like flying stones and bricks, glass and petrol bombs. Drug and bomb detection dogs need to be physically very fit because when working they need to sniff up to 300 times a minute and that's exhausting enough without having to search through baggage as well. Welfare concerns associated with racing greyhounds include those relating to the proportion of animals who are bred uh, for racing but never make the grade and subsequently disappear. The studies have indicated that up to a quarter of animals that are bred for racing may be euthanised. They relate to injuries sustained by the animals during racing, which is a high-speed potentially dangerous activity with traumatic injuries, fractures and even deaths on the tracks uh, being a regular occurrence. Even those animals who survive their racing careers uninjured will be retired from racing at about two and a half to three and a half years of age and unfortunately many of those animals are then killed because of lack of suitable homes. Dogs used in sled racing pull sleds over often deep snow in temperatures down to minus 34 degrees um, for durations that last from as little as a few days to as long as two weeks. These dogs are vulnerable to injury, fatigue, lameness, dehydration, diarrhea and chronic stress. More than a quarter of a million animals are kept by hoarders in the US and thousands in other countries. Cats are the most common animals hoarded, followed by dogs, but this may also include reptiles, birds, exotic animals and a variety of large animals as well. The number of animals kept averages around 40 but can run into the hundreds. Overcrowding tends to result in progressively worsening hygiene with inappropriate elimination in the household which is not cleaned up, deteriorating standards of sanitation, neglect of the animals, inadequate nutrition, inadequate basic preventative health care and deteriorating living standards for the animals and the human carers involved. Animal hoarding is a psychological disorder. It's often associated with denial of progressively worsening conditions and characterised by a lack of willingness to cooperate with other community agencies. Unfortunately, despite being our most beloved companion animals, cats, dogs and other animals are very often neglected and denied some of their basic needs. We can and should do much more as a society to safeguard the welfare of our companion animals.